an opportunity to talk to some amazing people. And when this name came down the list, I said, yes, I have questions. I want to know not just that she's got an amazing album that's out, Letters from a Black Widow, that is out tomorrow. So download it, get it wherever the music is sold. But let me welcome to the show for the first time, Grammy Award winning, amazing voice, beautiful human being, Miss Judith Hill. Welcome to the Karen Hunter Show. Hi. Hey, hey. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? How are you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah. Can't complain. Okay. Just been traveling and yeah, it's been great. I, oh, you're a tourist too. I didn't know that. May 6th. Okay. The bulls are in the building. <laughs> So I, I uh, you were on one of these music, uh, the competitions, and uh, that's when I first saw you. Maybe it wasn't the first time I, I saw you. Yes. Okay. So I bought tickets to This Is It, and I, I've never seen Michael Jackson perform before outside of, you know, TV and stuff growing up, even watching the cartoons. So I was excited. I was so excited to go to a Michael Jackson concert. And then he made transition. He passed away, he died, and didn't get to go. But you were going to be on that tour with him. If I did, And I remember because I was like, I think this young lady was on another thing. Walk us through that experience. First of all, working with Michael Jackson. Um, what was that like? Uh, it was pretty surreal. You know, Michael is one of those special human beings that come on this planet that have a, a different kind of energy and it was very electric to be in his presence and to be a part of that show which was so transcendent I, I came from a, a family of musicians so I was always music was part of my upbringing in the church and in schools and everything but to see an artist take music and, and apply so much story and leadership and um, magic to it, it was really inspiring for me to see that and so up close and personal and to be a part of that. As, as you're talking, um, I'm thinking you're right, once in a lifetime, but I think never again that we'll ever see that. And I'm sad too, because as I look at music, not present company excluded, the range um of a person like a michael or even a prince who's not here anymore like the ability to be able to do all of these things but then transform people you know when you think of michael jackson people falling out in stadiums where they don't speak english <laughs> crying mm -hmm. that music touched souls and i imagine you took so how do you take some of that into what you're doing or is it already there well i think it's a lot of things i think um that type of um, purpose and intention is, I agree with you, a bit lost today because I, I believe that a lot of commerce and the the monetization of music is sort of tarnished the the those types of um, um, purposes. But you know, to see someone like Michael and Prince to really take music and become really like the Moseses of of culture and really lead people. Um, into so much more than just listening to the, this is my jam. It's like, you're actually leading people into something much greater than themselves. And I, I will always cherish that because um, I feel like that's what I strive to do as an artist. I'm, I'm a very spiritual person. I, I believe music has the ability to heal and has the ability to really help us transcend. And so for me, that's why I do what I do. I mean, it's, it's for that feeling and it's for that higher calling. Mm. Letters from a Black Widow. What? Walk us through this. Walk us through this. Who, who's the Black Widow? Is it you? It's you. And what? What letter are you leaving? Letters are you leaving for us? Um. Yeah. So this is an album that took me a long time to finally write. It was something. So the Black Widow was something I was being called mm. online and it was a very very negative <sighs> word that was okay. being applied to me it's That's just it's clicking now because you work yeah. with prince you work with michael i'm sorry like i would never make that connection yeah uh, I mean, but we're, we're, people know. are assholes folk <laughs> really y'all really got yeah. we need some counseling we need some therapy <laughs> and that's oh, what I, I, did. I did go to counseling because it was really it was really a uh, dark time for me i, I took it really hard I was in a depression for a really long time because I, I just 
first I was hurt from all of it and I didn't know how to cope from that kind of like social onslaught of just just sort of like a witch hunt basically and and um and so being called that really like triggered me and 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 really like brought up a lot of like hard like deep pain for me and my counselor was like one day he was like you know you should just write about the black widow just for you just so you can get it out because it's been such a poisonous thing for you and it's been some it's a hurdle in your spiritual growth and your personal growth and you need to just like get it out you know so i finally put pen to paper and started writing about it and when i did it was like this break this thing just in me just i like started crying it was like I finally gave voice, my own voice, like not afraid to like address how that made me feel, you know? And so from that, this album came about and, and I call it Letters from a Black Widow because it really is me taking a journey through shame and, and through all of these things, just personally and in the public eye and finding levity, finding triumph and finding a way out of it. And also just not putting too much pressure on myself to try to tie it up in a nice little bow at the end, you know, cause that's mm. not how life is. It's a, a work in progress. So letters from a black widow is, is my first step in really just addressing all of it. What was the first sentence that started this journey to release this trauma? What was the first sentence? Well, it's actually the first sentence of the album um, from the first song, one of the bad ones. And it's the first sentence is I can, I can see the mountain. No, I, I'm sorry. I can feel the mountain. And what happened is I, I went on a camping trip with some friends and we all took mushrooms and I was like, <laughs> oh, she just, is that being people just doing mushrooms? Like it's just a well, thing now. We just all took mushrooms. I don't know if it's a thing if for, for that people group. They're really like into like, you know, all that stuff. And so it was just supposed to be a fun trip. Right. I ended up having, um, a, like a spiritual trip everyone else was partying and I ended up seeing this mountain of pain and I, I it was like actually a really and that's what really inspired me to write and gave me the courage to write it came from this camping trip so I can see the mountain was really on mushrooms and I saw the mountain and it was it was like it was like me realizing man you thought you had gotten past all this stuff but look it is it, this mountain of pain is is right in front of you and I was, I was like able to really like be honest with myself. Yeah, you messed up. You, this stuff has really hit you hard and you, you aren't free from it. And so that was the first, you know, sense of the album. You didn't do anything to deserve the, the label or the trolls, you know, but be talented. You know, I, I think about that. The, the curse of being talented in a world of mediocrity, mm -hmm. right? That's how, I, you know, it's like everyone wants to be famous or this or that, but the talent and the work that goes into being great at anything, most people are willing to do. So if you are doing that thing and then you find success or you are great, then you're going to have a lot of people that are going to hate you for that, which mm -hmm. is a wild place. But it's also encouraging because it means you're dope as F. It mm. means you're dope. Yeah. And, you know, there's there's definitely when you're, I mean, that, I, I appreciate that. And it's also just, there's so many complicated things that go into it. When you're, you know, associated with powerful men, that's also very, very much of a um this course, sort of how I think the Black Widow, the term came out of it. It's mm -hmm. like, there is that element of, uh, well, what, what is she trying, you know, there's always like people looking at it you sideways, like why were, you know, what are your intentions and all that? So um, it's a really complicated thing. And in society, it's very hurtful. Um, and uh, you can't really do anything about it. You know, it's, I have to learn that it's not my job to try to change people's mind or convince or be so concerned about what people think about me. You know, I have to stay on my path, do what I'm called to do. And I can't worry about these trolls or people or what they might say or what kind of crazy thing they might come up with, you know, but it's easier said than done. Yeah. I mean, the reality is most of us aren't living that 
being trolled constantly either. So we're talking with Judith Hill, the great Judith Hill. Some of you may know her from The Voice. I was extremely mad when you got voted out. I think I actually voted. Um, like I was I'm mad that you didn't make it to the finals because you were clearly, to me, the best. Was it The Voice? It was The Voice. Was it The Voice that you were? Yeah. I was like, wait a minute. Um, Y'all can't hear this woman sing better than anyone else. You turned around for her. Um, you know, but this journey now to this album, winning a Grammy, um, becoming, are, are you, where are you in, in, in your estimation? Because if, if you're anything like me, there's this plan, mm -hmm. there's this plan written somewhere. Where are you in the plan? Um, that's a great question. I feel like I'm in that stage of really just showing up every day and really um, just consistency. You know, my, my, the big plan is to continue to perform and, and make music for the world and bring people together. And I feel like that's what I'm doing every day um, when I do my concerts and my shows and just everything. So I feel like I'm doing what I've always dreamed to be doing um, and to just continue to build it and also to to stay, stay true to that, that that's why I'm doing it and not get caught up in other metrics of success, you know? That part. Uh, you mentioned that earlier, the business of music. I was just talking with a friend of mine who was in the mu music industry. And my, my goal is to, uh, you know, break all of the, <laughs> all of the gates and, you know, create spaces for people to be their full selves. Like we've been kind of cattled into this is what's great. This is what's what you should be listening to. And everything is algorithms and clicks and money, but not soul. Right. So I feel like we have to usher that in. We can't right. allow the algorithms to control. Like I was just saying, everyone curates their stuff. So in these echo chambers, mm -hmm. where where's the growth? Like, how do you get introduced to new things? If you only get to right. pick what you watch, what you listen to, who you who you're around, everyone's segregated in their little silos. It is. But we have to, we have to break through. So for you, you're doing this not for the commerce, but you got to eat. <laughs> so, right. So what's the best, what, what are they telling you? How do you, how do you do this? And I'm glad you're on tour, you know, and I'm glad you're, you're doing press because I know it's probably like you hate doing press, but you, you got to get out there um, to talk to people. But in your mind, like, how do we break through this noise? Right. No, that's a great question because I ask myself every day that question. Um, I think, at least for me, one of the things that I I think helps me feel like I'm breaking through the noise is to create things that I feel are bigger than the noise and are so um, visceral and so much in the real world and creating those spaces and those moments on stage and in the music. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we are flesh and flesh and bone. We're not algorithms um, and digital beings. Like we're not AI, we're human. So I feel like when we speak to the humanity in us, that, that transcends all of the technology. Um, and that being said, you know, like it is a struggle. Sometimes I, I have to take gigs that are for, me to pay the rent or the bills. And sometimes I have to, and then the stuff that I really feel like is my calling pays less or it doesn't pay at all, whatever. So um, it is a, is a delicate balance a d dance that I have to take. Um, but I, I have a lot of faith in us as people that, you know, I feel like this whole thing that we're in will eventually is imploding because we can't keep living in these asylums and, and just be an information overload. Um, for an indefinite amount of time. I feel like there is always like an antithesis, antithesis to that, an answer to that. And I feel like um, staying on the path and just being very consistent um, artistically and allowing the messaging to be so louder than the noise, I think is, is, is what I'm trying to do. I want to like listen to some of the music. Um, we got Flame and Dom de la Lumière, yeah, pronounce Dom that for me, please. Uh -huh, Dom de la Lumière. Okay, because I don't speak French. Or someone said, you know, some people are polyglots, and then people who speak one language are Americans. Uh, 
<laughs> I feel like we need to do better. So I'm, I'm going to try to, condi- con- you know, condition my tongue. Um, you were raised in a home with a mom from Japan, a uh, pianist and a dad who was a funk, funk musician. Uh, and then that's this, this beauty that has come out of that. Which one of these, if, if, I can only listen to one. Which mm-hmm. one? Which one would you choose? Oh, that's a hard one. They're very, di- they're like very different. I mean, Adam de la Mere is, is probably, maybe I say listen to that one. That's about women. Okay. That's my okay. I have an opportunity to play a little music uh, intros into every hour. I have th- three hours on Urban View, Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 p.m. Those of you who are just tuning in for the first time, hi. Uh, I think, Smith, this could be hour three. I feel like we want to, you know, always, yes, thank you. Okay. You know, we're always constantly bringing music because it is kind of the thread. We all have a soundtrack to our lives. I feel like this generation may not have that, though. Like, I... I, I was I was sharing with the, the audience when I was in day camp, seven years old, earth, wind, and fire, the entire summer, reasons the entire summer. Yeah. To this day, when that song comes on, all I think is joy, swimming pool, campsites, uh-huh. uh, the three little brothers who all were so cute in the back of the bus, and we were, you know, that song. But we didn't have a choice because it was the radio, you know, right. and you, we got to be indoctrinated into some really good music. Uh, not today, though. I don't know. What soundtrack are people listening to? Mumble rap? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not going to judge it. I'm not going to judge it, Judith. What are you listening to besides yourself? What's um, in rotation? What's in rotation? Um, I really, I mean, I listen to a lot of, like, stuff all around. I mean, so I go in my phase and sometimes I have to just listen to, you know, classic blues like Howling Wolf and, you know, oh. just old stuff like that. Um, and then I'll go into... You know, I listen to some of my peers and people I love, like Corey Henry and people like that. But yeah, I go in phases. Sometimes I listen to Brazilian music or I'm listening to um, gospel music. I tend to hear voices, you know. So it's, I'm just always like in different phases. In your home, uh, your mom being a pianist, I, I'm assuming that you play, that mm-hmm. you play, that you have to play. What else? You you play guitar. I think you probably do that too. What else do you What else do you play? Judah's like, yeah. What else What else do you play? I mean, I I just play. You know, I play the bass and stuff, especially in songwriting. I love playing the bass because I feel like a lot of it comes from the bass for me. So I'll I'll play that or whatever. And so yeah, I mean, I, I still got to work on my drumming, but I love drums too. <laughs> Being in the studio with both a Prince and a Michael and john legend and everybody you know it's like it's almost like musically ooh, the 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 tutelage is so amazing what did you take from each of them that you incorporate today oh man it's like take away so many different things different lessons i mean I think the most extensive time I spent was with prince so i, I really took a lot away from just his method of recording and the psychology and, and just sort of the 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 way of life of an artist. I took so many so many lessons from him, and really is is really fueled me to be so um, resilient. I think seeing him resilient um, was was really um, like life changing. I mean, Michael obviously. I feel like with him, I took away just like the feeling of the magic and 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 just. The ability to dream, like I feel like as as artists, we're dreamers, you know, um, and I hope to remind myself of that anytime I'm feeling bogged down by society or the the world, I have to just close my eyes and, and, and remember the dreams, like, because that's what that's what fuels the, the the innovation and the creativity, you know, so I always remember those things. But besides mushrooms and camp camping out. Um, <laughs> Judith Hill is here. Uh, the black letters from a black widow, uh, available tomorrow. So download because clicks and algorithms match. Just keep clicking on and buying it, and then giving it as gifts. You know, we have to we have to be proactive here uh, in a world such as this. So, um, where where is your joy today? Where's your joy? Uh, my my joy is with the. Uh by the inner child, me, the kid in me, just uh, the excitement of what it felt like to be a kid and looking out at the world. That's what it, that's what brings me joy and makes me want to write another song, makes me want to uh, explore and discover new things. It's just reminding myself of the kid in me. Okay. 
Well, y'all can get catch some of that joy because uh, Judith will be out in them streets singing, singing. Uh, she's going to be on tour. I mean, just You can go to judithhill.com. Actually, she is uh, going to be in Carson, California on the 27th, West Hollywood on the 30th, May 7th, going to Norway. Man, you're going to be in Norway for a yeah. while and in Sweden and Denmark, girl, yeah. Germany, Switzerland. All right, y'all, you know, shout out to Renee in Switzerland. Austria, Germany. Okay, what is this tour? Are you uh that that sounds exciting. Yeah, we're going to hit Europe again and and play the music tour the new album, so we're really looking forward to it. All right, if y'all out in them streets in the in the European streets, you'll catch her and you can catch her here like in the next couple of days. So go ahead and head head over to California to uh see her judithhill.com and the new album is Letters from a Black Widow. Uh I would love for you to come back anytime please please come on back judith hill i love it i love this music 